Hello traders, it's Samurai Trader here. Welcome to this training video. Let me read the right title, How to Trade with More Certainty, Less Emotion, Less Stress and Better Results. Now, I've just finished doing a coaching session and during that session, I had a number of brand new traders in there and they're asking uh, about the difference between trading Renko, Range and Tick. So I thought what I'll do is produce a number of training videos for uh, perhaps new members, brand new to what I do and perhaps new to my YouTube videos on how I day trade. So what I'm going to do is go through a number of chart options with you. Today we'll look at the black gold at CL with Renko charts and in coming videos we'll look at tick, range, we'll look at some time-based charts, etc. and for a range of different markets. But most importantly traders, what I'm going to cover with you is the thinking process and I'll go through from the right hand side of the screen trade by trade for you or candle by candle and show you the setups and talk about some of the setups and how you can do exactly the same thing. Now most importantly these videos are raw, real and unedited. Okay so you're going to what you see is uh, what you get. Um, I'm not going to go back and do an editing. You'll actually see me call some hopefully not, but probably some wrong trades as well. I'm not going to get them all right, but I will show you what I'm looking at. And really importantly, something I will get across to you is why I use Tick and Renko together. So I'm going to show you both charts. We'll probably go, I don't know, 30 minutes or so with this video. So as we do get underway, I do need to pull up the risk disclaimer. Now, I know with my camera, and I'll turn the camera off in a moment, you can't see the whole disclaimer, but I will show it at the end of the recording. So uh, please feel free at the end of the recording to pause the video and uh, read the disclaimer. Bottom line is traders, don't trade with the rent money. Make sure that you fully understand the uh, risks of trading, uh, that you do your homework first of all, and we get you trained correctly. So moving right along, right along. If you're uh, brand new to my channel, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do release a lot of new videos and most importantly, subscribe or go and request, request, let me get this right. It's been a long coaching session today. Request my free training manual. And I also have an ebook there, The Truth About uh, Day Trading. So please go and request those and visit my website. You'll get a really good understanding of everything that I do. So first of all, and what it says behind here, and perhaps I'll, I'll uh, turn this video off now because I don't want you to miss a lot of this. And here we go. Does your mindset support your trading? That is many traders that come to my channel initially on YouTube have been attempting to learn how to trade for a long time. Many may have blown their accounts uh, two or three times. And what actually happens is you develop what we call a fixed mindset. Well, traders, don't let the shadow of the past hold your future hostage. You can do this. I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay, I still get crap and I get attacked that these strategies don't work. But traders, the only time what I'm about to show you today does not work if you're not willing to do the work. That is, you've got to work at it. You've got to master the setups. Trading is nothing more than a pattern solving exercise. Okay, I'm going to give you so much information today that if you don't get it right, it means you're rushing. It means you haven't taken the time. And here's what I've discovered. There's really only a few reasons why traders fail. But one of the main reasons is, is that the trader is just not committed. Okay, they're just not committed. And to really master the art, and perhaps I should have just mentioned this, let's just go back to the camera here for a moment, is that it's really important that you understand, this is what I do full time. I have research report, and this is a new report. Uh, I've just finished studying uh, 50 of the world's top uh, day traders. And I've got a complete set of uh, videos I'm putting together on them. What made them great? What makes the difference with these traders? And it's really interesting. And I think Dr. Van uh, Tharp says it best. Traders think they're committed. They're just not committed. And the only place in the world where I know that success comes before work is in the dictionary. So many traders think that you know, there's a shortcut. Now, trading ain't rocket science. Let me say that straight away. 
and I've bought just about every system. You can't see this, I've got a massive library. I've been doing this for 26, nearly 27 years now. And I've been able to invest in my career. And I do this full time and I coach full time. But what I do know is commitment is absolutely necessary. Now, my job as your coach is to motivate you and guide you and to get you on the right track. So perhaps some of the things I say to you, I'll turn the camera off now, you may not like because I'm going to be direct. And that is, there's two types of mindset. You've got um, either someone with a very fixed mindset, quite often they're an older person, they're jaded, they might have blown their accounts. Um, and what we've discovered about fixed mindset individuals is they have to be right. OK, but then we've got what we call the open minded person, uh, one with what we call technically it's called the growth mindset, where what can I learn from this? How can I use this? And so this is very, very important is the, pro the approach that you take traders with your trading is critical. Now, as we go through this, whether or not you love me or hate me, I frankly don't really care. Yes, I love my members. I love my coaching clients, um, but in the end, it doesn't really matter. But what is important traders is, is what you take away from today's session. I want you to walk away being empowered and saying, wow, I picked up some ideas. Now, number one is the power of the questions that you use. That is the questions that you ask as I go through. Now, are you gonna have a fixed mindset? That won't work. I could never do this. That's what a fixed mindset person does. They use usually disempowering statements or questions. But on the other hand, we've got these magic questions. What's great about this? With my own trading, what's not perfect yet? What can I learn from this? What can I do today to fix this? What's the best way to get this done? What's my edge? These are the things that winning traders say to themselves. It's absolutely critical you approach trading with that point of view. Okay, so you're looking at becoming a day trader. Maybe you already are, and I should say this. If you're already an experienced trader, um, what I'd like to recommend is you approach or you look at what I'm doing and you say, okay, what Ray teaches? How can I use that to improve what I'm already doing? Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. So look at what I teach and listen and you'll pick up ideas. Maybe you don't like Renko because there's some pullbacks, some, some drawbacks we'll look at in a moment, but you just love ticks. Well, I'll talk about trading both and we'll be looking at uh, incoming days, other types of mark, uh, sorry, other run types of charts, and of course with different types of markets. But I guarantee you, if you're open-minded, you will pick up some great ideas. So let's consider this. When considering a market, a chart type or a time frame, these is, uh, are some real key points that we need to look at. So, what margin does my broker require? Is that if you're trading, say, uh, the new micro e-minis, you only need around $600. If you're trading the ES, you might need around $5,000, particularly if you're staying within the golden rule of no more than 2% maximum risk. And that's for a newer trader. As you increase your contracts, it's critical that you drop your risk down to at least 0.5. Yes, your return on equity will be lower, but I'll tell you what, it makes trading a whole lot easier in the long run. So we need to consider margins. Do I have volume? The market that you're looking at trading doesn't have the volume. In today's coaching session uh, with my members, we're looking at the EC, the, uh, the, futures, the uh, Euro futures contract, which is only 6.25 a tick. Uh, so it's great for a newer trader. And we also were talking about the micro e-mini, which is $1.25 a tick. Uh, sorry, a dollar. Wait, let me get this right, $1.25? Gee whiz, it has been a long day. A dollar, uh, I can't remember now, gee whiz. Anyway, um, uh, and this is still going to be on the video, raw, real, and unedited, I told you. Um, but with those, we're looking at the volume. So volume is very important. Um, and this is what we do, actually, I might as well show you this. 
So very important trade is that uh, I've set up as a separate window, the main markets are either trade or I am interested in. Okay, so I can see the volume. Now, we will see this when we go back to the PowerPoint in a moment. The, one of the key reasons this is really important is that it, it really dictates the time frame or the chart type that we're going to be trading. Now, right now, we're in a low volume month. August will be a low month as well. And so we tend to have much, much lower volumes. Why? In the US, we've got the summer holidays. And of course, it really starts to pick back up in September. So that will dictate the time frames that you're going to trade. And so volume is very important. Does the market trend well? I'm not a good range bound market trader. I need, I'm a trend trader. I want to go with the trend and I'll be showing you some tricks with that. Is that uh, so I really want to make sure I've got a trendy market. Now some of the seasonals, uh, some markets of course may go into a trading range for a number of months or a very tight range. Uh, and then they'll trend well uh, when we've got the key season. So you just need to check out that market. What are the best trading hours? We've got three main sessions, New York, Asian and London. So this is very, very important from a time-based chart or the size chart you're using. Of course, during say the, the Asian and London session, which is also known as the Globex session, we've got much lower volumes during that time. So you might want to drop your chart down. For an example, when we look at the CL chart in a moment, during New York, I will use a four tick Renko and a 233 tick time, uh, sorry, uh, tick chart. Now, during the uh, Asian session, London session, I'll drop down to a two tick potentially and an 89 tick. So time frames are very important. And with my members, we there's, there's a basic table that we'll walk, work to uh, for selecting the best times. Now, also, what is the best time frame for the EC, AC1 and AC2? What is really important trade is that you trade in the direction of an anchor chart. So EC stands for entry chart, anchor chart one, and anchor chart two. Now, with our entry chart, we're going to do all of our trading on that chart. And I will be showing you and calling potential trades as I see them off an entry, off a, an entry chart. But what I won't show you just because it, unless it's real time, it gets really, really hard not looking forward on the anchor charts. But I'll show you an anchor chart to give you an idea what I'm looking at. But this is so important. Fortunes are made trading with the trend. So many traders want to pick tops and bottoms. Now, can you make money doing it? Absolutely. And I love divergence trading. However, until you're consistently profitable, trade with the trend. Now, what are the best strategies to, to, to trade? Very important traders. I've got 15 or 16 strategies that I use. And what I say to all new traders particularly, I've got a whole stack of them that I teach my members, okay? Don't feel overwhelmed, okay? Because what I'm about to say is this. Um, I have what I call Curly's Law. Curly's Law, remember that great movie, uh, City Slickers, where Curly said, uh, turn around and um, uh, said to, um, oh, what's his name, that cowboy there, uh, the funny comedian, oh dear me, I, I am tired. Anyway, he turns around and says to him that one thing. And he and uh, he turns around and says, well, what's that one thing you said? You've got to find that. Now, Curly's law, when it comes to mastering the art of day trading, is mastering one setup. Own that setup, then go to the next one. This is where so many traders are getting it wrong. They want to go and master all of these straight away. And what actually happens is you suffer from what we call confused knowledge. You start with one and you build from there. Very, very important. You start with say the 34B over 2B, which are a good 75 to 85% probability. And you build from there. It's just so important that you do that. Now, with that, what I was about to say is this. Our strategies should work on all markets. If you get a market uh, where, say, a typical uh, trend continuation or a breakout strategy is not working, 
uh, don't trade that market. And I think Richard Dennis uh, from the Turtles fame uh, has said a number of times that if he had a strategy that didn't work on a particular market, he'd trade lots of different markets, so wouldn't trade it. And it's a great philosophy. What indicators do I really need? Now, when we go to my uh, charts in a moment, you'll see I've got a number of indicators. Some are not necessary when you're just trading with the trend. So you wanna to try to remove as much noise off your charts as possible. So I've got some additional things, but I've been doing this for a long time. So you don't have to have everything that I show you. The other key point is, where's my entry? Where do I place my stop? Where's my target? And don't forget to factor in commission. So these are the considerations that we have when we're selecting a market to trade. Now, today's market is going to be CL, but black gold, which is $10 a tick. And as I mentioned, we'll look at different markets over different sessions. Now, there's lots of different types of charts. You might be a time-based trader, a tick, a volume, a range Renko, or a, a Renko and tick combination, which is what I prefer to trade. Now, when it comes to that, if you're a time-based uh, trader or a tick chart, what I show you on Renko and explain, the same principles apply. It's just a different type of chart. So the exact same setups will work on any type of chart. Now, how to achieve 70% plus winning trades? You know, why, trade, why make trading harder than what it has to be traders? Trade with the trend, okay? Go with the flow of the river, don't flight the trend. Now, we buy the dips, we sell the rallies. Yes, counter trend trading is important long-term, but start with the trend. And that's what I'm gonna focus on for 15, 20 minutes when we get to the charts in a moment. So in principle, this is a, a little diagram I found somewhere on the internet. I'm, I'm a terrible artist myself, so I thought I'd borrow this one. Just to imagine here that the dark blue line is your anchor chart. Now, there's a number of reasons why I use two anchor charts, but if you're new to trading, just start with your entry chart and an anchor chart. Okay, there is a bit of um, a formula to what do you set up, what do you use when you're setting up your tick chart or your Renko or your time-based chart. We won't go into that today, but you want to trade in the direction of the overall trend. And so these little green arrows and this little red, this is our lower time frame, our entry chart. Then we'll get some divergence, of course, you get on the new trend, etc. And my favorite form of trading is what I call trend continuation. It's almost pure price action trading. That is, we're waiting for a pullback and a confirmation and we're back in the market pretty quick smart, okay, because it works well. And as I mentioned earlier, you only need to master one setup to be a consistently profitable trader. You know, you might trade maybe two trend following, like we've got a setup called the 34B and the 2B, both are kick-ass uh, setups. You know, very easy to learn, very closely related, so they're easy to identify, uh, and they're very rules-based. So, so for new traders, and if anyone here decides to uh, become a member of mine or to join my coaching, you'll hear me talk about this all the time. Start with those two and you build it. Once you own those, you add another and you add another. Now, this is just an email I just received just yesterday from one of my members, and he's up, uh, what did he say? He, he's only been trading 34 Bs, only two trades in a trend, and he's up 75 ticks for the week. Um, and he's on the right track now. Now, I see this all the time, but what it means, traders, if trading has not been good for you, you need to draw a line in the sand now and say, okay, I'll listen to what Ray has to say and I'll follow his guidance to the T. It's very, very important that you do that, traders. Extremely important. Now, there is a disclaimer. Okay, so if you want to read the disclaimer fully, pause the video now because you'll all be at this is not live. Well, I'm recording live, obviously, but um, uh, you're watching this off YouTube or it's been emailed to you. So pause the video if you want to, because that little bit was out of it, okay? Uh, and pause it because I'm about to just go to the final slide before we go to the charts. There it is there. So let's now look at the charts. So what we're going to do 
of what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you a couple of possibilities. Okay, I'm going to go through exactly what I'm looking for and what you need to learn to do. Okay, step by step. Now, I'm not going to go to all the ins and outs and every indicator we use and why, etc. And there's, look, here I've got a two smooth stochastic. You can use an RSI here, you can use a percentile. Uh, you can use a standard stochastic, you can use, a, I've got a special coded um, uh, MACD, you can use a standard MACD, just use my custom settings. So most indicators are available that my members use are available on every uh, trading platform just with my custom settings. If you've got a platform such as MT4, uh, MT4 doesn't come with good standard Renko. So uh, you can buy a plugin if you, on my members area, in the members area, there's a name of a vendor for about $50. You can buy uh, a plugin for range and for Renko. Now, we are looking right now at the, what I'm going to do is call some trades and just tell you what I'm looking for candle by candle. What I want to show you here, traders, is a thinking process that we go through and I call it get ready get set, go. That's what I call it. Get ready, get set, go. Because when you're day trading or even swing trading, it really doesn't matter. What you're really looking for is where is price heading? Where's the support resistance? Where am I going to have a turning point? Okay. So that's important. For an example, let's just take this here. This is what we call a 200B and I can tell you now it's be another setup, a very high probability one. We call it a, it either qualifies as either a two or a three bounce. It's it's not rocket science, very straightforward when you understand why, but it kicks butt, okay? So if you're watching these, I call them candles, but they're bricks effectively, come up, I'm looking for the reversal. Now, what I do know, and this is very unique with oil, with oil, you always want to make sure that on your charts, you mark up a 56. So the round numbers, but and the 20 and the 50 and the 80. Let me say that again, round numbers. So 51, 52, 53, 54, the 20 cent levels, the 50 cent levels and the 80 cent levels, because you will bounce off these every day, time and time again. And you can almost trade these up bounces alone. Okay, well, that's another, uh, another time, another discussion. So what we're looking for is a pullback. First reversal candle, get ready, get set, go. That's effectively what we're looking at. Now, that's for your deeper pullbacks. For your shallower pullbacks, and um, uh, this, this white paint bars, by the way, it's what I call a super scalper, that does not plot until the third candle. And we only use will generally only use the super scalper as a combination or as a confirmation for either counter trend trades or deep pullbacks. Like that one there, this one here, that by the way is a 2B. Uh, with the other ones, I'm not so worried about the super scalper because it's not getting me in until the close of a third. You're not until the open of a fourth candle. But there are specific times when we want to use as a nice confirmation, uh, the super scalper plot. Now, this is the open of the Globex session from a couple of days ago. When you trade the Globex session, the market slows right down. So this is um, uh, uh, Eastern Standard Time, the time frame you can see down here. So it's four tick Renko. When you go to the Globex, it slows down considerably. What you might choose to do then is to apply a two tick Renko. For an example, right now, I'll just show you this here. The time, uh, uh, the time right now uh, is, you can see it's 21.08 p.m. And we're looking at uh, the open of the Globex session uh, back here. Let me just scroll these along. And so we had the Globex session open up just uh, here. Back here. Now, when the globe accession opens, what we've got to remember is that the first couple of minutes aren't usually tradable because see, the, it's closed from now. So what actually happens is with uh, CL, it's basically open 23 hours a day. So they'll close it 
around 5 p.m. opens again at 6 p.m. Uh, and usually the first 5 to 10, 15 minutes are not tradable. Excuse me one moment. Uh, so it's not tradable for the first few minutes. So if we look at this here, not, not tradable, and it's not really till even that there, it's only four minutes. Now it is. And what we've got here is what I call a 2B. Okay, very high probability uh, uh, trade. And this is the two tick Renko. Now each one of these step downs, little steps here is one tick. So one, two, three, four. So it's a good 10, that's a good sort of 200, $300 move in that move. Okay, now when you go to a four tick Renko, the way we set them up is each one of those step downs is worth 20. So that's sort of worth, I don't know, it's, what is that, $600 move if that was a four tick Renko, this is a two. But the point I wanted to get across is that what we'll do is we'll have a two tick, a four and a seven, right? So there's a formula that I use for different time frames of the day because they work well. Nothing magical, as Gan famously said, there's nothing new under the sun. Okay, be careful of the man that says to you that he's manufacturing antiques, okay? There's nothing new under the sun. It's just good old common sense. So let's have a look at this for a minute. So here's what I'm looking at. So I'm gonna run through for the next 10 minutes or so, 15 minutes, the process that you need to learn in thinking how to trade. So this is what I'm looking at. And I'll, look, just one thing I will show you is this. I've got a whole bank of screens here. I recommended you have at least two screens. So normally you'd have your anchor charts and your entry chart here, maybe your matrix on a separate screen, but I also wanna have my tick charts set up separately as well. So where's the tick charts I wanna show you? This one here. So I'd have my tick charts on a separate screen. Now, during the Globex session, which we're in now, I'm going to use a lower time frame. Okay, I'm going to use an 89. I'm not telling you what it is, an 89, a 233 and a 610. If you're new to trading, once again, you don't have to have the third higher time frame. There's some crap on here you don't need to have. You don't need to have the ATR. You can cut this down straight away. Now, one thing I will do, is that when you're trading with tick charts, I will rely, not rely, but I love to have a, an oscillator just to confirm or to have what I call a short-term hook to confirm the move on tick charts. We don't need it on Renko, uh, but on tick charts, on time-based charts, on volume charts, it's nice to have a hook. What you can also do is have set up uh, your tick and Renko on the one screen. And let me just explain to those that are perhaps brand new to Renko or uh, even those new traders that are, or, or experienced traders that have never really looked at Renko. Look, one of the advantages of Renko is it's beautiful for smoothing out your chart, okay? As we can see here, look at that there, lovely. But what you can actually uh, lose, and let's just say here, if we were after um, 10 or 15 ticks, which is uh, 100 to $150, you're out there. You're out of that. And you may notice here, we don't get any pullbacks except for the tails on here. But if you look over at this tick chart right here, okay, you can see we had a retracement right there and you had another re-entry. Okay, so we had a nice re-entry actually right on that candle there was a re-entry, which is here. And we can see we sailed all the way down. So, it's great to smooth out your price charts, but you can miss out on some valuable information and other possible entries. So that's why it's good to learn with a combination. Now, if you prefer not to, um, if, or if you don't like Renko, for brand new traders, I get them on Renko, they just find it much easier. Here's another really good little example there. So we can see you smooth all the way down, the little retracement and pop, it popped down. Now you are at a pivot just there, okay? And right there is a very high probability turning point. Now, why is that? There is your classic divergence, lower low, higher low, okay? And 
that may have almost been, without looking at the high time frame, that might have even been a, a, a two, what we call a 2D, a double divergence, which kicks up. But let's now go back to this our chart here. So great move. Now, it's very easy to look back upon a chart and say, well, look, Blind Freddy could have picked these trades in, in hindsight. So let's go through now, candle by candle, what I'm looking for here. Uh, if we were trading this live right now. So note we're pulling back. The big thing is when we enter a trade, we're always saying to ourselves is this, where is support resistance? So if I was entering this trade down here, so right there, we had what we call a T19, a little divergence trade, okay? We're bouncing off there off the 80 level. There's some nice divergence. I would be in on the third highest close and my stop would be one tick below the little swing low here. Here I've got a little ATR stop, you could do that. You can use a parabolic SAR to do the same thing. You just fine tune it uh, to get you in. So we're rallying up here. Now what I've got here is a 200 EMA. And I'm, expect and I'm expecting a bounce. Uh, you bounce at least once, probably 95% of the time, you'll get what we call an, uh, a 200 EMA bounce. Okay, nearly every single time. Right, it's just, and there's one right there now. It's just uh, the 200 EMA are magnets. Now, there are very few what we call leading indicators. Most indicators are derivatives of price, means, meaning they'll plot later on. So what you do have as a leading indicator are support resistance areas, uh, being your EMAs, the higher time frames, particularly uh, my high ones and the uh, floor pivots. Floor pivots uh, are just fantastic for that. Okay. Now, for white paint bar, you would not see right now. So just imagine here, we're watching the market. You did not see, you wouldn't have seen that till now. Note the tail has ticked below the second candle the super scalper has plotted. I do not have three lower closes. Uh, it is off for 200, so I'm not interested in this trade yet, okay? It hasn't qualified. So let's see if we get a trend continuation here. No, there's a reversal candle. Now I have three lower closes. Now I'm gonna short this. Now if we were trading live, we'd be shorting this for eight to 10 ticks. So I'm in on the close of the third candle, or sorry, through the third lower close, let me get this right. And my stop ideally goes one tick above here. If you want to, on, on a uh, four rank code, that would give you a stop of about 12 ticks or $120. If you want to lower that, um, you can make it at your ATR or a parabolic. And so you can sort of get it down to around 10 ticks. The only other thing to get your stop down, of course, is to lower the time frame. So if I drop, drop down to a two tick Renko, that's gonna give me a five tick stop. Oh, with the, sorry, with the super scalper three lowers, that will give me uh, a stop of about, um, 80, about $80, okay? So it'll drop it considerably. But you can really only trade the two tick Renko when, during the globic session, which is what we're in now. Otherwise it's too fast. So you could be trading that right now. So we're now short. So. Uh, 20, 40, 60, 80, 1, 120, 140, 160. All right, so that hit 160. You could have easily got your 140, $140 out of that move. Now, what have I got here? Well, look, it's almost a double bottom. I would have liked to have seen it one tick lower. So I'm not going to call anything or say anything that's a trade because it's, uh, it just doesn't set up for one that I have right now. Now, what am I noticing, traders? The market's starting to go up. I'm about to uh, hit the 56 mark again. I'm going up, I still don't have an entry. Now, I come on up. Now, notice here that uh, that is effectively for me, a new lower high. And I will say this, these are one of the toughest areas to trade, right? So when you're coming back up to the 200 a number of times, a 200 EMA, quite often it signifies a change in market direction. So let's just wait. Now, what we do have here, traders, for those that are interested, you have their divergence, 
and a little double top off the 200. But to qualify as a divergence trade, I need three lower closes, which I don't get. But what I do get right now is a signal to go long. And this is what we call a 34B. Now, notice, notice down here that I've got a little uh, short-term stochastic hook. I've uh, got my EMAs are now starting to fan. And this is perhaps one of the most important trading rules that I'd like you to write this down. Do I have a fanning of the EMAs? Do I have a fanning of the EMAs? That is, are the EMAs fanning there? No. Are they fanning here? Yes. So what we're looking for is this. So above the goal, which is the 34, I've got my 21 and my eight are above. They're starting to fan. Now I do have my 200 there, so I've got to get past the 200. Right, but it's a pretty good, um, fairly good probability that I'm about to go through that. Okay, so we're in. Okay, now, by the way, that there I call a rule of one. My stop goes one tick below the low. So I've got a seven to eight tick stop when I enter these. And I'm after a minimum of eight ticks. Okay, now, where's my target? So we're always thinking targets. Now, my first target is of course to 20 as a potential target, and then ultimately a floor pivot. When you trade, and if you don't understand floor pivots, it's, it's, it's just, just so accurate, particularly when you go from your floor pivot. So if you go under the, the day's floor pivot, you've got about a 92% chance of traveling from the floor pivot down to the what we call the S1 support. Or if you go above the floor pivot, you've got about a 92% chance you'll go up to the R1. Now, someone gave me those stats. I've never sat down and worked them out exactly, but I'll tell you what, it's pretty accurate. Now, you're usually what we call stair step. You're not gonna go, rarely will you go straight up. So you usually stair step on the way up, but it's a great target if you're going for a larger target. Okay, so there, 20, 40, 60, 80, 1, 120, 140, 160, 1. Now there, once again, look at that there. What happened? We just had a bounce lo and behold, at the 20 cent level. Now look at our fan. Look at this, and you may notice that the 34 is crossed above the 89. Time to get excited. Well, not real excited, but you know, look, it's a great sign that we've got a new trend setting up. So what I'm waiting for now, traders, is a, uh, we may pop back down and I'll wait for the first reversal candle and I'm back in. Well, there it is right there, actually. So I'm going to get back in on this. Now, remembering one, uh, we're in, we are trading the Globex session. This is quite slow. This is over a number of hours. That's great for a new trader. It's a beautiful time to learn how to trade. You've got plenty of time to adjust your uh, order, to move up your stop loss when you need to, etc. So there's some great markets for trading after hours, like after 6 p.m. Eastern Standard. Uh, oil is one. The ES is another. I really like gold as well, as long as you're trading with the trend. So they're good markets to trade. So I'm going to be in there on the close of that, usually in on, you're in actually on the open uh, of the uh, second candle. Now, I'm also looking at my uh, tick charts just to see what's happening there. So with this, Where's my next setup? Where is what we call the magnet? So the 200 EMA is a magnet. The 20 cent, 80 cent, 50 cent, they're all magnets. My next area is my floor pivot there. Okay, so we want to go up to that floor pivot. So 20, 40. Now, we hit plus six ticks there. Now, I have a rule that with that particular setup, uh, if I go five ticks, uh, I'm happy to scalp that and get that out. We've got this thing, and you'll hear me say it regularly if you become a new member of mine or, or what, start watching my videos. Five by five, yes, I can. Five by five, yes, I can. Three by eight, so I can. Now, you may be thinking, hang on, Ray, you had me up till now. What's this five by five? Three by eight. 
if you're trading CL, okay, if you're trading CL, five by five means five trades a day, net by five ticks is 250 less your commissions. Three by eight is three by eight ticks. What that is is $400 a day per contract. That's if you're just scalping. For a certain trades like this one here, your one, two or three Bs, okay, you'll romp uh, eight ticks in is good, a good 80, 90% of the time, okay? Then you'll get your little scalps. And note this, note how the entry is well out of the EMAs. I want to remember this traders, the further your entry is out of the EMAs, the greater the chance you're gonna have a pullback. Particularly when we start to get um, what we call angulation. So what's angulation? Notice our price here is angling away from the EMAs. Now it doesn't matter if this is the close of a market and reopen, okay? Because it happens all the time. So the greater the angle, you have what we call a reversion to the mean. So what will happen is, the further we get out, you wanna really be ready to scalp because you'll quite often get a pullback to your major EMAs. So I'm still gonna be calling up here because you'll get profit taking, etc. And there it is there. Here is my re-entry. This is my re-entry. Okay, my stop goes one tick below the low. Okay, we're in on the close of account and the next one, two, four, six, eight. So that touched nine ticks and now we've got a bit of a pivot bounce. Okay, so we've got a pivot bounce. So now I'm gonna wait for, uh, now this is where we have a higher chance of bouncing. Excuse me one moment. So this is where we've got a higher chance of bouncing right here traders. And that is we're getting a retracement back and going up there and hitting that, that pivot again. So these, these trades, when you're very close to a pivot, and here we've got one here, are a lower probability. So we'll see what happens with this. So let me just give you a couple of ideas on managing this. Either you don't take the trade, because you may bounce right off the major pivot here, or if the market is slow enough, you can take the trade, just get ready to pull your stop up very quickly. So let's just say here we go for five ticks here, 20, 40, 60. Now that actually hit two, four, six, eight. So you easily would have got say six, maybe seven ticks out of that trade. Now I've got what we call a pivot bounce. Fantastic trading opportunity when traded correctly. And this is what we call a counter trend trade. Look at this trend. We won't look at the anchor charts right now. I'll have a quick, I'll pull that up in a sec. But what I've got here is what we call a T19, which is a higher high. And note my MACD is falling, falling down here, it's, it's collapsing. Now this divergence has been around for years. Okay, there's nothing new under the sun. All right, so what I'm looking for is a specific, specific entry technique and it's right there on three lower closes. I'm going to take this and I'll call it as a trade. Now, what I will say, T19s, and without looking at the anchor chart, is um, when I've got uh, divergence just on the entry chart, it's a lower probability divergence trade. New traders, I don't want you trading these, right? Learn them. And there's a lot of reasons why you want to understand because you want to understand when not to continue to trade with the trend. That's right. There are certain times when you don't want to continue to trade with the trend because the divergence signal can be so strong that there might be some profit taking here. It looks like it's going to continue only to see the market uh, continue down. So, okay, let's say we're in 20, 40, 60, 80, uh, one, well, there you go, so you'd be out. So that was a nice little move, okay? And we've got another bounce. Now, just here, this is where many, many traders get it wrong. And I'm about to wrap this video up. So let's have a look at the anchor charts. And I wanna see 
whether or not we had the condition. Uh, come on, let me just start uh, just sorry about this. Let's just go scroll that across. Okay, so let's just see this. Okay, yep. Yeah, so what we actually had there was a little 2D. Okay, so see here, I've got a pivot bounce here and look at my MACD on my anchor chart. That is what we call a little double top. Divergence, divergence. That's a fairly strong divergence signal. Let me get it right and away it goes. And then right there, we get another beautiful. Now these are, what, by the way, these are virtually 100%, just take the trade, okay? J-T-T-T, -T -T, we call it, just take the trade. When you've got these, these are two Bs every day, what you take every single one, when you understand the rule. Why? Because they kick butt. That's one there, that's one there, that's one there. They're rules based. And as we wrap the video up, I just want to say this, and let's just talk about one of the most important rules when it comes to trading. Traders, I've got dozens of members that I coach that are in my coaching program each month. And so I've got members that just buy my program, everything's uh, there. But I've got others where I run eight live two-hour sessions every month, every Wednesday, sorry, every Tuesday and, and uh, Wednesday evening, 6 to 8 p.m., we have a live coaching session. If they, members can't make it, they're always recorded. And it's peanuts to attend each month. So as I say to them, um, I was gonna say then, what was the point I was gonna bring up then? It was a, <laughs> a point on that. Hang on, let me go back. I get so caught up with this. What was the point? Oh, that's right, thinking in probabilities. Sorry, traders, thinking in probabilities. Traders, you've got to learn the stuff. The individual trades random. Anything can happen. Someone with a big fat finger in Japan or the UK or wherever can push the wrong button. What was a perfect setup stopped you out. Okay. I'm going to give you a concept as we finish today, which will probably really do your head in initially. You'll go, what? He's lost. He's mad as a cut snake. What's, what's he talking about? You've got to start thinking in probabilities of 20. The individual trade means nothing. It means nothing. I want you to celebrate your losses. What do you mean by celebrate? Yes, because I'm one close, one trade closer to a winner. When you know you've got 70 to 90% winning trades, which is the level of expertise a good day trader can bring themselves to when they've got a rules-based strategy, uh, you're thinking in probabilities. You have two losses in a row, get super excited because you're about to have a run of maybe seven or eight winning trades. Now, I'm gonna tell you this now, traders. There are literally hundreds of trading systems and strategies that really do work. I've got dozens of them on my shelves. I research nonstop, okay? This is what I do. Now, with that being said, we, the trader, are the ones that let them down such as we're entering too late. Now, you saw some of those entries. We're in one or two candles from the retracement. You can't get in any earlier unless you can actually, if you put say a buy limit order in or a stop to get in at a bounce point. I personally want to wait for a confirmation. I want to wait, I'm a chicken. I want to see a confirmation. I believe it's just a lot safer, um, a lot less stressful. Okay, so you want to wait for that confirmation, but you can't get in much quicker. Now, once you understand trading with the trend and you're getting 70 to 80% of your trades, you can start to believe in probabilities. Okay, you know, what gives the casino the house edge? Rules and probabilities. You are your own casino, your own casino. You've got the house edge, you really do. So traders, I'll wrap this uh, one up here. So in summary, trading CL for black gold is a fantastic market to trade, uh, either during the Globex session, even though it gets very slow, there's still some good setups. Uh, and during New York, you've got five to 600,000 a day in uh, trading contracts, $10 a tick. Um, for a brand new trader, you can start with some other markets where it's a lower value per tick, but 
much, it, it's just a great market to look at. So in the next video, we will look at um, CL again. I'm just making sure I don't forget, but we'll look at using or trading the 233 tick on CL. And so I'm going to go through a whole range of different markets, uh, different setups and, and whatever. Now, just in the final thing is, look, my the investment in my program, uh, the Day Traders Fast Track program is over 15, 16 setups is only $197. Let me say that right up front. I don't charge thousands. This is what I do. I love trading, love coaching. Uh, you can find out about my uh, program. It's only $197. That's it. And it includes, if you've got NT7, NT8, uh, particularly NT8, TradeStation, includes all my indicators, uh, all other platforms. I give you all of the settings anyway. But I don't want to make this a big sell uh, because it's a just massive value. So traders, I'm going to wrap this up, get going. It's been a long day. Um, I'm, I'm recording this down under in Australia at the moment. And uh, I mean, it's 12.39, but uh, I've been going since about 2.33 a.m. So getting a little weary. So traders, thanks very much for watching this and uh, look out for the next video. Thank you.